my name is Dr. Heidi Sampan. I'm from the Philippines Flying Labs and I really appreciate you um, taking time to uh, listen to us, to our uh, latest report of what we've done in uh, Tawi-Tawi, Philippines. So basically what we're doing is we want to strengthen the last mile health service delivery in the remote villages of Tawi-Tawi, Philippines. And thanks to your support, we are able to do that. I want to discuss with you the the typical community that we encounter in Tawi Tawi. Um, this is the um, community that we targeted way uh, way back in last month. It's called Sipangkot. It's a small island community in Tawi Tawi, and it's basically uh, part of the geographical isolated and disadvantaged area. There are lots of those um, in the Philippines, and Sipangkot is one of them. So. There's a geographical inequity in access to services just because it's so hard to reach these areas. And because of that um, inequity based on their location and topography, um, they are not performing so well in terms of health outcomes. For example, the facility-based delivery is only 12%. Uh, compared to the national average of 61%. And you can see Tawita, um, Sipangkot in this map, it's way, way back in the southernmost area. So it's almost close to Malaysia and Brunei, um, not as close compared to the rest of the Philippines. So that's why there's a geographical inequity. In addition, um, childhood vaccination coverage is very low in this area, uh, 29%, um, compared to 59% in the lowest quartile in the nation. And for the COVID situation, 26% are only fully vaccinated against COVID-19 versus 8% uh, now nationwide. Um, and just to give you um, a background, it's not, you know, they're not uh, fully vaccinated against COVID-19, not because of limited supplies of the COVID vaccines, but it's also because it's so hard to reach these people. Um, it's so hard to reach this area. So they're not able, the local health officers are not able to deliver the COVID vaccine in this, uh, in this region. So it's not the lack of resource of the uh, resources, but it's the difficulty of the infrastructure and the geographical location. So for the Philippine Flying Lab setup, set, um, thanks to Pager Duty, thanks to you guys, we are able to um, use a DJI M300 uh, drone and was customized by Robotics to fit the cargo. So as, or as mentioned earlier, it's locally owned and operated. And we are happy to say that we're, we're the first organization to obtain um, the BV laws or beyond visual line of sight authorization for drone deliveries in the Philippines. Um, and just because of that good relationship with the local stakeholders. So with this um, DJI M300, it's easy to set up and it's very mobile. You can uh, um, target two communities as long as they have good GPS locations and they have good uh, signals you can easily uh, deliver. And as I said, you know, um, we're very happy that we have multiple stakeholders and partners collaborating together with us, like um, from the drone manufacturers to the funders, um, to the local government department of health and the school officials. And we're also lucky that we're also collaborating with the military through their work as um, in humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. So we have good partners with the Air Force, Army, Navy, and also we have good um, relationships with the local organizations called CSO um, REACT, which um, specializes in communications because they're helping us um, during the drone delivery. So um, this um, video shows the first inter-island delivery uh, in Sipa Cebu to Sipangkot. It only took eight minutes versus 30 minutes by small boat. Um, and this trip can be longer depending if there's a low tide. Um, the local health officer mentioned um, when we were talking to him that sometimes it might take one to two hours just to circle the area just because of the low tide. So the boats cannot go in and they have to do zigzag traveling just to reach that coast. And sometimes that two hours is very critical, especially if you're transporting patients. And I heard one patient died just because they were not able to transport her to the um, nearest tertiary hospital because of the low tide. So during our delivery, we were able to deliver amoxicillin, a box of amoxicillin, a box of cephalexin, a box of omeprazole and ORS, 
to the uh, and gave it to the local midwife and she was so happy because she was saying they were really waiting for this um supplies for for several weeks now just because they have cases of diarrhea but just because of the logistics they are not able to get the supply from the main health center so with the drone delivery um we were able to shorten it and we were able to deliver uh quickly at eight minutes versus the 30 minutes or one one to two hours so the other uh test area that we did in tawi tawi is um is uh, along the mountains from bato bato to parang uh, parangan tawi tawi and with this one it's very special because we were able to deliver um COVID vaccine, uh, J&J in particular, 20 vials of Janssen vaccine that we're able to use right away uh, in the vaccination drive clinic. We were able to, to do it and it only took nine minutes versus the 30 minutes or one hour by local um, vehicles. And that's the beauty of um, having the drone delivery. You can have the vaccination schedule, the vaccination day scheduled on the same day, and you just deliver the vaccines on the same day, and they can use it uh, right away within five minutes of delivery. So that will minimize the logistics planning. That will minimize um, the if you're if the community doesn't have electricity, then you were you're able to um, you don't have to store the vaccine, and you can use it right away. So lots of value in the cargo drone delivery. And this slide just shows the local health officer uh, opening the cargo box for the first time. And we're happy to say that all throughout the nine minutes, the temperature inside the cargo box was able, was, we were able to maintain it at four degrees Celsius, no spoilage. And it's a very nice uh, cold chain um, environment inside the, uh, the storage box. So, there are definitely distinct advantages in using uh, UAV for the last mile delivery. Of course, as I said earlier, it's faster, it's accurate because uh, the GPS locations are inputted in there. So it's, you know, you know that they will land where you program it to land. And in the end, it will be a simple logistics planning, as I said, because rather than bringing the whole setup um, for one trip, using the small boats you can use multiple deliveries small deliveries and you can actually do that over several you know hours and still have a safe delivery and accurate delivery and as i said it's safer um it's lower cost um especially if we, we start doing the two month three month rollout to see the return of investment and to see the supply and demand and the usage um but I'm hoping it will be much lower and in terms not just for financial, but it's also lower cost in manpower and other um, intangibles. And of course, it's less energy consumption, especially with the high um, prices of fuel right now. Um, with the drones, you're just, you, know, you just have to recharge the batteries, no need for fuel requirements. So it's better for the environment. So, the challenges for the drone service delivery, of course, um, legislative and regulatory issues, just because um, drone uh, regulations are not really strong yet here in the Philippines, especially for the beyond visual line of sight where you travel 10 kilometers one way. But it's a good thing we have a good relationship with our civil aviation authorities. Um, of course, um, challenges when you start techni um, technical expertise for scaled up operations, especially if you're handing it over to the community and they want to operate it on their own. So they have to, you know, train their own pilots. Um, we have to train the, the personnel, etc. And then, of course, the infrastructure initial setup. But hopefully once they learn it, the learning curve, um, you know, can be shortened. And then, of course, the most important thing, the most important challenge, the end user and public acceptance. And we are very lucky that we have a good relationship with the health officers in the province of Tawi Tawi. They accept the program. They they have a buy in. They know the value of the program. Um, but it took a while for us to actually get their buy in. It's it, you know. Um, we have to establish relationships. We have to establish good communications with them. But now we're very happy that uh, they are embracing the technology, especially that we're coming back to do the um, semi-permanent uh, delivery program. So um, for us, the reason why we're doing this is 
um, I believe in what Paul Farmer has said, one of the global health leaders who unfortunately passed away. The idea that some lives matter less is the root of all that is wrong with the world. So we believe that you know people living in remote areas have should have equal rights, um, should have equal access to services, should have equal services to medicine and delivery of vaccines uh, compared to the rest of the population. So that's why the drone cargo delivery service can help with this inequity and can balance um, the health uh, and, and improve the health outcomes in this uh, area. So uh, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, um, please email me at philippinesflyinglabs.org. And these are the um, our local pilots in blue and the local health officers wearing the printed shirt from Tawi Tawi um, are uh, seen in this photo as well. So thank you so much and hopefully we will have a very successful uh, two month, three month service delivery and we will give you a report on that as well. But thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the help that you've been giving us here in the Philippines. Thank you.